Here we are for another episode of the Cloudy Days Calm Nights podcast with me, Lethal Coils. We got my girl P- Chaos Pixie. Hello. And my man Matt Sinister. How are you guys What's this up? week? Doing good. Doing good. You know, uh, exhausted. Been training like a madman. Mm. I have to believe it. You know, I mean, it, I'm so tired. Today, it's like I trained six days. I'm taking today off. And literally, like, sitting at my desk, wicking. Mm. There was, you know, I felt tired and, uh, like, like a, it was like a heavy weight, almost like somebody stepping down on my traps and my shoulders and my neck. Because I'm just so damn tired and so exhausted and, and just so beat up from the whole week of training. I'm, I apologize. Can you hear that? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> our, our cat is 18. Well, he's turning 18 this year. Mm-hmm. And he's obnoxiously old and he's at the point where what he wants to do is what he wants to do. <laughs> And if that means come into a room cats are, a barn Cats are that way busy all the time anyway. Right. Our but, youngest um, cat is, is you know, everyone goes to bed. He's outside scratching at the door. You know, let me in. I want to play. Yeah. Like it's this midnight, one does cat. That, Go to sleep. This one does that all winter. You let him out because it's sunny out and he thinks it's nice and he wants to be out. And then 30 seconds later, he's sitting up on top of the air conditioner yelling at the window in silence because he wants to come back in. Yep. And yep. then 10 minutes later, he's asking to be let out again. That's how it goes. Well, they have tiny little minds and they can never make them up. So. <laughs> but I do apologize for that tiny dangle clack. Um. <laughs> We are joined today by our very special friend, Mr. Vaping with CJ. Josh, how are you tonight? Hello, I'm well. How are you? Not too bad, not too bad, my friend. Um, if you are not aware, Vaping with CJ is the former co-host of my previous show, The uh, the Lounge Live, if I remember right. I believe that was The Lounge Live. Yes, yeah, it was. Jeez. We had some good times there, um, but it's been a while, and we've got this new podcast. I figured we'd bring you on and talk some more with you a little bit, and uh, see how you've been doing since since the the departure from the show, and uh, you know, ch- kind of check up on life with you. Um, so, CJ, for those that are not too familiar with who you are, that listen to the podcast. Who is vaping with CJ? <laughs> I describe myself. So, um, so my name's Josh. Um, I am from the UK. If you can't tell, um, I thought you were Swiss. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, do um, vape reviews on YouTube. But um, it's mainly juice reviews, if I'm being honest. Don't have that much hardware in because I think. Mm, um, true. So yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to up my game on my editing. Yeah, how's that going so far? Doing all right. Yeah. <laughs> it can be a pain sometimes. It can. It can. Yeah. But once yeah. you get like the into the swing of it, it becomes easier. But editing is probably my least favorite part of doing the whole thing. Oh, no, it's my favorite part. I love doing it. Really? You don't like the recording section? <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay. Do you know what? I, I, don't, I record I don't... just for the editing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't mind the recording. I don't mind the recording. But, you know, I'm, I'm all for the editing. No, now, do you more... do any of the editing uh, on TikTok videos or Instagram uh, there, Matt? I do all of it. You edit everything? Mm-hmm. No shit. And you do all that mm-hmm. right from your phone? Yep. Oh wow. Yeah. I mean they're not they're they're not like long videos, so Right. They, uh, you know, you, the only time it gets to be a pain in the, is like for TikTok, uh, you got fifty nine seconds. A lot of times if I like I'll have to edit a video down to fifty seven seconds because it'll load on tiktok as 59 right so 
And that's if, you know, I want to, if I don't want to break it up in parts, what I'm doing, this is those little music videos of me working out, you know, and then you share them to Instagram. It, uh, like a lot of times my, my pre, my pre-workout blog and post-workout blog are longer than 59 seconds. So I'll always just have, you know, the link, I'll just put the beginning of it up and, and then, uh, the link to, uh, Instagram that'll load it up on, uh. Uh, Instagram TV. Okay. Okay. But uh, the only thing where it does sometimes become a pain in the butt is you'll you'll edit videos down, and then for whatever reason you can't find a a, a song the song that you want. Yeah. There are only like thirty seconds or forty five seconds, so you got to edit back down. Yep. Yep. Um. Know you know, just just too. stuff of that nature. You know, but it's. Uh, it's not an easy. It's not a hard thing to do. No. So you've been doing the editing uh, thing now. Uh, what else is going on? Um, not a lot really. Um, just work and sleep. Most just work them. and sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I completely bypassed this segment, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and hammer into that now. But we do the buffet. We we actually do a buffet here. So, uh, what are you vaping on, CJ? Okay, um, I'm vaping on the. I was going to show it to my camera, and it's a bad idea. <laughs> it's a podcast; I don't need to do that. Well, you're showing it yeah. to us. You could show it to us, but yeah. So, the SX Mini G Class Trilogy on top of there, with some Zeus Juice Black Reloaded. Ooh. Lovely. Yeah, it's lovely. Uh, and I've got the Topside Jewel, old mod now, but I still like it with the Goon 1.5. Okay. Uh, a most curious kernel from the Rockstar Project, uh, UK, mm. UK basically liquid, really, really nice. And I've got the UL Caliburn G. Um, I've ate that at work mostly. It's it's um it's nice to just to. Yeah, <laughs> I hear you. Uh, with the blue burst from Riot Sun. Um, um, who are you gonna throw it to? Good Lord, um, well, uh, got a real simple buffet today. Um, I got the top side light uh, with the profile profile 1.5, okay. uh, you know, with you know, mesh on the inside and uh, rocket blast. And uh, I love I love vaping rocket blast through this. Um, a lot of people are not very uh, high on mesh in RDAs, okay, um, but uh. And I've had some RDA mesh RDAs that are terrible, but I do enjoy the profile. I always have, yeah. Uh, I we actually have two of them each. Um, I just have one. But we, you only have one. I only have one profile, but I have the regular cap and two different low pro caps for it. Oh, that's true too. Yep. Um, but we only have the OG profile. We don't have the one point five. Yeah, well, I, I upgraded because I, yeah. I was doing the the uh, the one point five for or the, the original for quite a while. But then I enjoyed the 1.5 as well. Yeah. And uh, also I got, uh, you know, my, uh, I do have the uh, um, Turk V2 on top of the clutch with uh, Breeze Tones 26s on the inside and uh, uh, Bule Bolu. Um, but then, you know, my, my, you know, I always keep a subum tank with me. And it's literally been like as soon as the coil's up in the cylinder tank, I'll throw it down on the desk to be cleaned, and I'll grab another one out of there because I got so many of them, and I'll just grab another one out of the drawer. Right. And uh, so on top of the uh, H-Cigar Wild Wolf. Oh, oh I got, one of my favorite uh, mods. Is that the 235? Yes. Hell yes. yeah. Um, and uh, it's got the, uh, the Famo Vape, Fat Baby Mesh cylinder tank. Hell with yeah. With some... Uh, um, what do I got here? I got Own Boys Punch. Dude, that's a dope mod, I have to say. It I is have a mine, cool little mod. Mine's in matte red, and it matches the satin MTurk V2 cap that I have. Oh, so nicely. So, so nicely. I love that mod. Um, how about you, Pixie? Again. As usual, my buffet is not big. I've got my purple, I think it's aluminum dreamer. 
with yep. the Breast Cancer Pink Mini Asgard on top. And I'm running a homebrew. Uh, what the hell is it? No, oh, read the label. Tropical fruit. There which is go. yummy. I like fruit. And I guess that leaves me. I am on <laughs> the... Uh, yeah, you guys can't see that. I'm too far away. This is <laughs> the Vert from Unicorn Vapes with the Turk V2 RDA on top there. Nice, matchy, black, and stainless. And um, inside that, I've got some of this Quesito strawberry, uh, strawberry cream cheese flaky pastry from uh, Saboris del Encanto and Fogging Out with the Batman. Uh, love that juice. We've also got the Acrylic Saga from Vapor's Cloud with the Ardent from Stan and uh, Tenacious TX Vapes and Times Vape. And uh, I have some of my own series aliens in there, triple 28s. Uh, and inside of that, I'm running some pineapple upside down cake. And uh, that's Ooh. delicious as well. And finally, we've got the pod mod kit. We've got the Gallop from eFog and Horizon Tech. And in that, I've, I'm rocking some killer custard. Uh, the OG killer custard, no strawberry or anything like that. Just original custard. And um, I'm digging it, man. I've been on with this pod mod for a couple of weeks now, and I've really been enjoying it. But um, that's what I'm vaping on. So, what else can we ask CJ? How has your YouTube progress been? since the departure from the show how has everything been been going for the channel and your shows and um yeah i mean uh, yeah. the the channel the channel's sort of i mean it's stagnated for a while um if you talk about you know subscribers i, was, I can't remember how long, how how many i was on when i was doing the show with you I I've like 400 and something probably yeah um but no it's 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 it's, it's coming along it's coming along good um nice. But I'm doing a show called the Layback Boat Show um, yep. on the um, so 7 p.m. UK time. Don't know what it is for over there in the states. But... Here, that's 7 p.m. That's 2 p.m. my time. That would be uh, what 11 a.m. your time, Matt. Uh, 2 p.m. your time. Yeah, 11 a.m. my time. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> you're quite a. Uh... So, um, yeah, we we do a show every Monday night. Yeah, and I'm I'm having a blast with it. And I took a break from YouTube for a couple of months. I think it was only about a month after I left um, the lounge drive. Yeah. Just take you know, physical and mental health, you know, got in the way. So absolutely, as it um, often does. Yeah, yeah. I had to take I had to take a break. So, but yeah, all good now. Firing on all all four cylinders, as it were. What? If you're firing on four, you're missing four. We have eight cylinders here in the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So, uh, yeah, let's. Well, considering talk to... the the steering wheel's on the wrong side of the car, you know, I mean, wrong side of the car. <laughs> <laughs> you drive on the wrong side of the road, kid. <laughs> oh man! So, um. I, I do want to redirect here for a second. Matt, how has training been for you this past week? Oh, man, I've been uh, really just, you know, I've, I my, my first two days this week weren't the best. You know, I was having, I was having a bit of a time, you mm -hmm. know, because uh, sleep is everything. And if you're not getting a good amount of sleep, uh, it's going to throw you off. It's going to throw you off everything you do all day. Right. Um, but then uh, uh, Wednesday and went went Wednesday and Thursday, I kicked butt. Awesome. I was in there just yeah. Friday, you know, I was exhausted from the uh, previous day's training. Um, you know, so I kind of, you know. You know, I want to say got through the workout. I still had a good workout. It just wasn't, you know, as much as I wanted. Mm -hmm. 
And then yesterday I did pretty well too. And today I'm, uh, you know, there's a term uh, that uh, wrestling legend Grill Monsoon used to say, uh, stick a fork in him, he's done. <laughs> and uh, that's exactly how I feel today. Yeah. Not to mention, last night uh, we went out to Outback Steakhouse and I had my entire day's calories there. You know, I had a protein shake before, you know, in the morning and then with coffee. And then, then we went to Outback around 5.30, you know, 5.30 p.m. And right. I had over 2,000 calories. Holy shit. You know, in that meal, because I had a couple drinks, I had an appetizer, I had a main course, you know, and then, uh, you know, I slipped away into a food coma after that. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> so today, today I'm feeling just, uh, just, uh, it's just one of those days where you're just like, I don't want to do anything. Fuck it all. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I'm 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 losing weight at the minute because I because I've put on quite a few pounds. Um, so it's easy to do. Yeah, so I'm I'm losing I'm losing I'm losing weight at the minute. I'm doing some hit training, which is high intensity interval training. Yeah. Um, and that fucking it, it, like every single time I do it, my legs are just feel like the one I fall off. I feel sick. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um... Friggin' uh, Friday, I did. I was doing squatting and lunges, and my left leg, my right leg sore, but my left leg just feels like I'm gonna collapse every time I, t- I take a step on it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mine feels, my leg feels similar, but for different reasons. I've recently well, I don't, realized. I don't want to know what those reasons. I, I don't want to know what those reasons are. If, if it's uh, well, no, it seems like my. The issue with my back has been getting worse, which they said yeah. it was going to, uh, to the point where it's going to start affecting my legs and the pain's going to start extending down. And uh-huh. it started doing that on my left leg now. So it's been a little bit more difficult to walk and stand up and do all that normal everyday shit. But, but I don't, I, I'm like one of the lucky ones that doesn't need to go through training or like diets or anything like that. I mean, maybe being on like a a training thing wouldn't be a bad idea. It's, yeah, but you you're not doing what we're doing in the sense that we're trying to lose weight. That's um, what I mean. You can, like I I'm you can one of still the, train. It's not just about weight loss. I'm one of those <laughs> people though. Like I said, I, I'm I think I'm one of the lucky ones that can eat whatever they want, and I never have to to go through that. So yes, you know, most, like most my people... metabolism is so high that I burn off everything I eat within hours. Yeah. <clears throat> then you have people like me that I can. I've worked with <sighs> dietitians. I've worked with nutritional specialists, doctors, hospitals, <clears throat> and been on the gym doing cardio. You name it. I build up muscle and I just get heavier. The fat goes absolutely nowhere. My guess would be you have food sensitivities. It's not. We've already checked through that. They think it's because of the lupus and the Sjogren syndrome. Oh, okay. The doctors have discussed how they, the way they feel my metabolism goes. It seems like it's constantly in starvation mode. But it's funny because I can, I fluctuate between at my lowest I'm like 25 to 210 and at my highest I'm like 230 to 235 and I depending on what I eat I fluctuate between those but I don't really ever get over 235 and I don't really get under 205 like it's so yeah I'm fat I'm chunky sometimes I'm fatter than others but like it never really goes above or beyond that like yeah. I've I've hopped on the scale and been two oh five and a few months later been two twenty five, two thirty five. I'm still in the same pant size, still in the same shirt sizes. It doesn't look a lot different. 
Yeah. Well, let me ask you, when you, you said you had the food sensitivities checked, did you just go to a food allergist or did you go to a naturopathic doctor that took a blood test? Ooh. Uh, <laughs> it's been quite a while. I ended up down at Brigham and Women's down at Mass General. And okay. they sent me to two different specialists there. Um, it was literally, it was hell week for my mother and I. Because they brought me in. They held me overnight. Um, they did, I did treadmill testing. They did blood tests numerous times throughout the entire time I was there. Mm -hmm. They would feed me a concoction and do a, a blood draw. They just left the, the stint in my arm and would do a blood draw every half hour to see where the levels were, what was getting absorbed, what wasn't. I had cameras put in places that cameras really should never be. Yes. Uh, it a was camera on the fun. end of a rotor router. <laughs> yeah. Become um, your own Discovery Channel special. <laughs> my my favorite was I called it the spacesuit. It was this giant plexiglass dome. And essentially all I had to do was lay in bed under this dome and breathe for four hours. And it had something to do with measuring but I don't know how the science behind it worked, but it was measuring metabolism. Mm -hmm. Nope. You can have all that. No, <clears throat> do not put me in an enclosed space. Mm -mm. Do, Never ever. If it makes you feel any better, the dome was like this far from my head. It was literally like the size of it. It just looked like a giant, a shit. oversized. They space tried. Suit. They gave me an MRI, and I hated it. I was like, "Get me out of this machine." Yeah, but that's. Imagine me inside an MRI machine. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I'm not claustrophobic, but you know, they if told something me were to happen, have to remove my my nipple rings, but I felt them like being pulled mm, to the magnets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I got told that. Like uh, I had, uh, you know, when uh, I first got injured, uh, one of the injuries was damage to my thumb, my wrist, and my palm. So I was wearing one of those braces. Yep. You know, and I asked, they said, do you have any metal on you? I said, no. I go, but there might be metal in this. And I go, should I take it off? And they're like, no, that's fine. <laughs> Yet I could feel my hand the whole time. <laughs> I think I should have taken it off. <laughs> I, I felt that about my uh, wedding ring after I found out, after I remembered that it was on there. Uh, I felt yeah. something on my hand pulling and pulling. And I'm like, what the hell is this? Oh, my ring is on my finger still. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but no, the, those, ugh, I can't stand tight quarters, tight spaces. I don't do well. Uh, I do get kind of claustrophobic. So um, I, I do not like being in an enclosed space. That dome thing, you can keep that. I'm all good. Yeah. But um, what else? What's been going on here this week? Not much. Lots of things. Lots of things? Lots of things. Well, we've had friends over. That's for sure. We had friends over, and we learned how to do oh, paint pouring yesterday. That was a absolute messy, chaotic, beautiful disaster. Um, we swapped Easter baskets for the kids and did food stuff. And oh, zombie... that's right. It's Zombie Jesus Day. Huh. It's Zombie that's Jesus right. Day. Um... I know I had a new horse come in at work that was supposedly very, very hard to handle. And in the situation, the barn he came from wasn't a bad barn. It's actually a gorgeous barn. But they're not set up to have to hand walk a horse inside. And he has an injury that makes it so he cannot be released outside. He has to be maintained at a slow, easy pace, which at six years old is not easy. So our barn is, you know, 120, 130 feet long with a 12-foot wide aisle. So we can sh close the whole barn up so that he can't see the other horses and walk him in there. And he stays quiet and calm, and he's been a peach. I thought he was a horse. No, he's a peach. Oh. Okay. Why are you walking peaches? Because they can. Okay. <laughs> Do you have them on leashes? Yes. 
Peaches on leashes. You got it. All right. Millions of peaches. Peaches for free. I know, right? I had that song in my head the other day. Uh, Presidents of the United States of America. I remember that one. Then Lump. Although I think my favorite version of Lump is still Gump by Weird Al. Gump by Weird Al, yeah. That's what I was thinking. He's yep. Gump. He's Gump. He's Gump. He's kind of square. <laughs> he's Gump. He's Gump. He's Gump. What's with that hair? <laughs> oh, man. Music. Music is a good topic to go to. We do. We generally veer towards this topic at some point during the uh, the podcast anyways. Um, let's talk your favorite. I know what your favorite artist is. I know what your two favorite artists are. Uh, Eminem and Ed Sheeran. Yes. There you go. So you're not talking to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Definitely not Matt Sinister. Nope. Um, Matt, we know who your favorite artist is. Sammy motherfucking Hagar. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, what has there been any new songs or any new artists that you've found lately, uh, Josh? New artists, um, or just I new songs in general? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't listen to. I don't, it sounds. I, I don't listen to any like radio or anything like that. I listen to. I listen to, like you said, a lot of Eminem, Ed Sheeran, and a lot of eighty stuff. Okay. Now, when you listen well, to music, you okay, listen okay to I got I got to clarify. We got to clarify. Eighties is a big topic. Yeah. Okay. There's a, a wide range of things in the eighties. So, uh, what eighties are we talking about? There's like lots of things happened in the eighties. <laughs> I lived it. I know. <laughs> so, yeah. No. Um. I listen to. That sounds weird, but I listen to a lot of my mum's stuff. Um. Because I because I grew up with my mum blood. 80s music around the house so things like spanned out ballet okay so um, the, the one hit wonders the the uh pop music you know the yeah yeah bits yeah. yeah um i listen to a lot of um i know they're not 80s but i listen to a lot of um like oasis okay, on. okay. oasis wonderwall wonderwall yep yep um <laughs> That's like the to... only song by Oasis that I know, to be honest with you. It's the only one anyone knows. <laughs> um, like I said, one hit wonders. Hey, nothing wrong with those, though. <laughs> I got a couple in my Oh, no, I, you know, when like, we do our playlist, I always give a one hit wonder. Like, yeah. like, I'll probably do one tonight. I, I'll probably do do a one hit wonder that I've got in my head right now that is going to be completely, like, way off base. Way off base, but anyway, yeah, we do, um, we'll get to that later on, but we do a, uh, a playlist for the podcast where we'll each choose a selection of three songs and add them to the playlist. Okay. So keep, keep thinking about what you want to add, but we're going to ask you for three songs later. Okay. But, um, all right. So music, what's been going on in the world of us for music not not much man uh i haven't really obtained any new vinyls or anything um oh i did get never ner yeah new never mind by nirvana <laughs> uh i did get that album which is a uh i almost want to say it's like a household name at this point Never mind by Nirvana was oh yeah probably that's, one of that's their a classic probably their best album in my opinion which which is scary for me to say that because I remember when it came out <laughs> yeah yeah well dude I just realized uh, a couple of weeks ago I don't know if I mentioned this during the podcast before but I just realized one of the bands I listened to Nine Inch Nails one of my favorite albums from them Pretty Hate Machine. I thought mm -hmm. it was released a lot later than it was. Mm -hmm. That album came out in 1989. Yep. And I remember it. <laughs> I Nine Inch thinking... Nails was one of the one of the uh, front runners in the underground uh, 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 alternative uh, 
you know, grunge, that era that was going on in the late eighties, but underground. Right. And it wasn't until like around 91, 92 that, uh, you know, Nirvana, Nirvana made it with the Nevermind album. And that just opened the floodgates. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you, you had like the, you know, Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, but Nine Inch Nails was another one of those bands that came out of that era. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And they'd already actually quite had a fan base and uh, they just exploded, you know, mm. because of the because of the uh, the new scene. Hmm. All right. Well, yeah, you'll, I thought you'll that have, was there's weird. Plenty like... of exam- there's plenty of examples of that. Um, like. I'll give you an example of uh, when bands like you know, it was labeled new metal. Oh, yeah, like Corn and Slipknot. Corn and Slipknot, and you know uh, Limp Biscuit and all yeah. that. One of the bands that had already been around, but uh, got a lot of new uh, uh, got a lot of new fans due to that era was Disturbed. Yep. Yep. They didn't Absolutely. even like being lumped into the whole new metal name. <clears throat> well, I mean, was Disturbed's sound, you know, insanely different from the other new metal bands that were out at that time? Not, not no, really. No, but the but but uh, what's his name's voice was David Draymond. Yeah, yeah, his voice was completely unique to... <clears throat> well, I'm not saying it's not unique. That's It's one of those bands that if you played a song from ten of those new metal bands, there is a handful of them that people that even don't really listen to those specific bands can pick out. Disturbed is one of them. Corn is one of them. For me personally, I can pick like Lincoln Park out of anything. Lincoln Park, be- yes. Because of those distinct vocals. Evanescence. <laughs> even well, even if the music is similar in beat and in sound, the vocals set apart that particular band. Yeah, and I, mm-hmm. I get that. Like I can understand that. There's there's a band that I do like that I'm not like super crazy about. But the name is Goliathan, and they're an all instrumental band. So when you listen to something that's all instrumental, you do pick up on how unique vocals can be in other bands. You know, um, yeah. So it's but one I of those. I remember with Disturbed. Uh, I remember, uh, you know, you, you know that the, the sickness was their like their big hit, their big break uh, mm. with that album. You know, having down with the sickness and stupefy and yeah. But I remember when I first uh, when I first heard all that, I go, I was just jokingly I said to somebody, you know, it'd be funny if they can, you know, I could see them covering uh, Land of Confusion, because I, I I was just like I was li- I I literally had played Disturbed and then Land of Confusion came I I put on afterwards, <laughs> um and I could I was just sitting there thinking about it, I go. I go, I bet he'd be like going, wah, wah, and this is the, way. yeah, I could just, I could just see that. And then lo and behold, like they wound up covering it. Right. You know, oh, it had, was a good I had cover nothing too. to do with it. I just, I, I was just like, it was a good cover too. Yeah. It was a great cover. Yeah. Disturbed. I like Disturbed. They're, Again, not a, not a band I'm like super crazy about. Um, me neither, but I do like them. That being said, I do have an autographed playlist of theirs. <clears throat> Um, and some other things from a show that was, um, yeah, that they did, but, um, and then they turned around and did uh, sound of silence, which I, I, I don't ever want to listen to again because I listened to it so much when it, <coughs> uh, when it came out and it so then good, I though. just burned myself out on it to the point of just yeah, like, cause I it was just, so good. You know, it's hard to yeah. burn yourself out on, uh, you know. And uh, I remember at the same time, Seether covered uh, "Careless Whisper." I didn't hear that one. Oh, that's a great cover of that song. I'll have to look that one up. You know, which I, I, I when uh, George Michael passed away, I, I uh, was, uh, I, I was listening to that over and over again. George Michael. 
You got to have see, faith. Here's the, here's the thing. You know, I've discussed this before. And CJ, why don't you, I, I'm curious, uh, you know, and, you know, I know there's the, you know, you know, I, I, I started listening to, you know, the, the, some of the first bands that I ever started listening to uh, came out of the, the new wave of British heavy metal uh, in the late seventies, early eighties, you know, uh, bands like Judas Priest and Def Leppard and Motorhead and all that came out, you know, when the, the British scene just exploded in the United States for probably the, the sec for the second or third time, you know, the first of course being with the Beatles, but, uh, you know, I was in that category of like, when I was at school, I hung out with all the other metal heads and we listened to, you know, the whole genre of stuff from Metallica to Anthrax to Ozzy, you know, and then we, of course, listen to Priest and Def Leppard and you know, with all the hair bands, you know, Motley Crue, Poison, all that stuff. But there were always some bands that I was secretly a fan of. You couldn't tell your friends. Right. You friends, no. you listen to Michael Jackson. You couldn't tell your friends you listen to Elton John, you know, or George Michael, you know. So yeah. did, or did Hanson. That, well, no, you know, I no. What the hell's the matter with you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's another word I could say, but then I'll get all these woke people, you know, sending me emails. Um, <laughs> oh, fucking Gen Z cancel culture. Let's cancel yeah. Matt Sinister. Yeah, good luck with that one. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, uh, I remember when, uh, like, when I was a little kid. And I first saw Michael Jackson at the Motown 25 do the, you know, do Billy, perform Billy Jean and first do the moonwalk Ooh. and all that. I was just like, my jaw was on the ground yeah. watching that. So I always, you know, follow, always was a fan of Michael Jackson. And what also helped was that Weird Al would parody him all the time, you know. So, um, but I didn't tell anybody. Hey, you know, I didn't go up to my friends at school and go, hey, did you hear the new Michael Jackson album? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, there's a, there's a, uh, I have a, I have a guilty pleasure like that. It's a, um, it's, a, I couldn't tell my friends that I'd, at school that I'd like them because, like you said, you get picked on or you get, you even get a kick in. Um, oh, yeah. So, um, so uh, <laughs> I, I still have this guilty pleasure. It's, um, it's a band called Take That over here. Um, don't know if you've heard of them. They're a boy band, um, but yeah. <laughs> well, that would mean that would explain why I haven't heard of them. But, uh... <laughs> was laughing now, but you, you, you can, you can, I have no shame in sounding anyone now. <laughs> no, like back, at, like, back at school, like back at school, it's like you can't tell anyone. For me, back in school, it would have had to have been the Spice Girls. But it was so bad that I had to lie to everybody and be like, oh, yeah, I dig Sepultura and Pantera. Fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> At home, I'm like, if you want to be I my remember, lover. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, uh, um, I lost a bet um, when the Spice well, Spice Girl movie came out. Spice World, I think it was called. Yeah, Spice World. Um I remember talking to somebody at the, in the locker room, you know, at a wrestling show about it. And uh, I was just like, you know, there's a part of me that wants to see it because Roger Moore's in it, you know. And that was my James Bond growing up was Roger Moore, you know. Yep. I, then I got introduced to the Sean Connery movies, and I was like, you know what, uh, Sean Connery's obviously the OG here, yeah. you know. Um, yes, he is the better but, Bond. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then when uh, uh, Timothy Dalton replaced uh, Roger Moore, I didn't like Timothy Dalton. And then, uh, then of course, uh, you know, I love Pierce Brosnan and Dan Daniel Craig's. That's another. That's I, I got a whole other bunch of stories about why I'm not. The movies are great. I'm just not a big, big fan of him for a particular reason. But we can get on that another time. Um, but uh, what was I saying? <laughs> uh, Roger Moore, morning, Spice World, Sunday morning shed time. Do the math. Uh, Spice World, Roger Moore. <laughs> Spice World, yes. Um, so anyway, uh, we made a bet. I don't even remember what the bet was, but I lost the bet. And the bet was that I would have to go on a afternoon 
uh, to see Spice World, you know, in the middle of the day, you know, like particularly after school. When everybody's there. When ev all these moms with their kids are there, and then I'm there by myself. Oh, shit. Now, and I wound, I walked into the theater, and it was just flooded with kids and their moms. And there might have been like a couple dads there or whatever, but it was mostly kids and their moms. And I just sat in the back of the theater to watch the movie. <laughs> and uh, you know what? It wasn't a bad movie. He's like, it wasn't horrible. <laughs> you know? See, as a chick, I didn't have that many issues with people busting me for the music I liked. Um, because a lot of the stuff that boys would bust on each other about was stuff that was geared toward, like, NSYNC, Backstreet Boys. Like, that was yeah. all stuff that if guys bragged about liking them, they'd get skinned for it. But girls were just kind of expected to. I got the reverse, though, in that, like, if I came out and I was like, dude, I was listening to Metallica all weekend. And like what? the guys, well, the guys would perk up and be like, "Oh yeah, what album?" And and they just hammer like fifty million freaking questions. Like, can I just, can I just like this music, please? Like, can I just listen mm -hmm. to it? I don't have to no. know how many minutes and seconds well, that, or what the tempo is for the fourth yes, song do. in on the I, second CD set. Yeah, like, you do. <laughs> you do. He says there are rules here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, actually, that brings up a good point in my head. And that's that, you know, it's more socially acceptable for women to appreciate a wider range of musical uh, taste than it is for men. I just realized that because women will get picked on less no matter which side they go on. If they're listening to metal or if they're listening to pop and boy band stuff. Meanwhile, the guys can't listen to that pop and boy band stuff without being ridiculed endlessly. Well, yeah, because we're expected to listen to pop and boy bands. And if we listen to friggin' metal and rock and actually can handle it or enjoy it or show that we know some of the lyrics, all of a sudden we're badasses. You don't get guys being called badass for listening to fucking Spice Girls or K-pop. And it's, it's shitty because it shouldn't be that way. Like, if you like music, you like music. That doesn't mean... That... Back when I was in school, <laughs> K-pop was not even I'm more. I'm more, uh, you know, the bands I listen to play instruments and write their own lyrics, you know, and write their own music. Right. They have somebody do it for them, and then they go on stage and lip sync. Yeah, see, that's that's why I like um, Ed Sheeran and Eminem, because they, they both write. write. Yeah. You know, mm. you know, it's not you know, anyone else writing it for them. It's them actually writing it and performing it. So that's why I like... Why I like them. Yeah. They, they just write... Their Authenticity own. brings a lot to the table, I think. And by writing your own music, not just instrumental music, but the vocals as well, um, I think that brings a lot more authenticity to, to your music. <clears throat> Well, when you say it's your song, when you say it's your music, it literally is. The whole thing okay. came from your head. Okay. But, okay, so like say Taylor Swift didn't write her own songs, okay? And she performs them. Everybody still refers to them as a Taylor Swift song. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And they're the face of, they're the face of it. But you got other talented people behind you that you know don't get mentioned. Ever. Yep, absolutely. Um, I think like nothing more. I believe they're a band that also writes their own music. Love that. Um, I prevail is another band that I listen to that does a lot of that. I don't. I don't. Per particularly care for just performers of songs. I I like the writing as well. Well, I mean, there I have there are guitar players that I could just sit there and watch all day. And they right. will sit there and you'll just hand them a guitar and aside from, you know, music you already know, they will just come up with stuff. And that's what I've always said to these these uh, 
you know, the boy bands and the, and the K-pop and all, all this stuff is here, here's a guitar, write a song. Yep. Because a true musician, you could hand them a guitar and they will write a song. Yeah, absolutely. That's um, why I like Louis Capaldi. Who? Yeah. Um, you'd know his songs <laughs> if you heard it, but he's one of those writers that writes his own stuff and it's all, like the song he wrote for his aunt like brings me to tears constantly. Louis Capaldi? Yeah. I don't know as, him. As a... <clears throat> This is his cousin or something, but he has a famous um, uh, relative. Uh, he's called Peter Capaldi. Peter Capaldi. Yeah. Yeah. There's a uh, there's a uh, long time uh, writer um, musician. Okay. Who uh, his name's Desmond Child. He's been around since the '80s. Right. Work with Aerosmith, uh, Motley Crue. You know, he's worked with, you know, Ozzy Osbourne. He's worked with so many different uh, bands and and helped them write, if not did write, uh, their so uh, some songs. Right. And you talk to him, he's got the look. He's an incredibly talented perform uh, artist. But at the end of the day, he goes, you know what? I don't want to perform. I don't want to go on tour and perform. I'd rather work in a studio nine to five or whatever and uh, write this song for this artist. They pay me a shitload of money and I could stay home and raise my family. Right. In the background. Kind of yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's great. You know, I just think it, uh, you know, it just says something about uh, someone when someone's coming out and calling themselves an artist, you know, or even worse, a musician and they don't, write any of their own they don't play any instruments they don't write any of their own they're instruments. a performer at that point they're, they're a performer you're a performer right you know you're not you're not a musician you're not a, you're not an artist you you're could a be performer. a musician you're not an artist well no they're not an, they're not a musician either. musicians you're play instruments music. well if you're a guitarist and you're playing music then that's that's a musician yeah you're a musician yeah Right, but if you're Britney Spears, oh God, no, you're a performer. Uh, you're just a performer. Yeah, Spice Girls. Yeah, exactly. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, I, I just have my uh, my drawbacks. Is I have, I'd rather watch. You know, it's just like I say when I'm at home, I don't listen to music on the, uh, you know, on the radio or, uh, you know, I always put a concert on because I want to watch the performance. Right. I hear you. Yep. I do, like, there's been one live live show that I've watched online. And I don't remember what platform it was on. It might have been Amazon, I think, maybe. But it was uh, Roger Waters' The Wall live. Mm -hmm. uh, that one was pretty darn good. But then again, I'm also a big fan of The Wall as a movie in, in general. And the album is great, too. Um, I don't know. Um, speaking of, though, I'm not, like, big into musicals. But there is one, and yes, I know we're changing topics again. There is one that um, really... I did enjoy, and that was Sweeney Todd, Demon Barber of Fleet Street. That was yeah. probably the dopest musical <coughs> movie I've ever seen. Yeah. Hey, what, Chris? I listened to that soundtrack. <coughs> I, I listened Excuse to it daily. It's so good. Yeah, you just listened to the soundtrack, huh? I don't. I, I'm, I haven't watched the movie for years, but I, I just listened to that. <laughs> listen to... <laughs> I love the movie. Uh, yeah. I never actually tried listening to the soundtrack on, on its own. But it's um, that's all good. I don't know why that just popped into my head. It just did because I guess because the wall is a musical, but of sorts. I mean, it is a musical does have a lot of songs in it. Um, 
and uh, you don't necessarily have to be on drugs to to watch it. It yeah. helps, but it's not. Uh, you don't have to be under what? You don't have to be on drugs to watch it. Oh yeah, no, it, he- no, it no. helps. <laughs> yeah, especially those cartoon sections. Oh yeah, dude, those are trippy, trippy, trippy. Um, so what? You're on the Laid Back Vape Show. What is the Laid Back Vape Show about? Uh, right, so uh, it's a vape show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> above the clouds and Monday night. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we talk a lot of we talk a lot of vape. There is like you know, kind of it off and unlike the other vape show it's not planned ever. oh kind of uh, like this yeah yeah uh and and it's sort of like a bit back you know it's, it's early afternoon for us uh, early evening sorry so you know it's, it's just like i've got back after work right you know, you know watch a live show with us is <laughs> all right yeah well it's a lot of fun Lot of yeah, I've, I've caught a few episodes. I think it's a good time. Um, if you guys aren't uh, familiar, head on over to Vaping with CJ's channel. Uh, I know he's got a lot of content over there. And go ahead and give him a sub. As well as uh, the Laid Back Vape Show. That's their own channel, correct? Yes, it's the, it's the yep, the LBBS channel. Yes. That's right. Yep. So you guys can find them on YouTube over there as well. I believe Vaping with CJ also has an Instagram that he does. I don't do much on Instagram. What? I don't do much on Instagram. No? Don't do much there? Maybe you should. Maybe you should start posting like your juice videos all over Instagram. Yeah, and just like tag the shit out of them. Like hashtag the crap out of it. And be like, juice. E liquid, e juice, vapes, vaporizers. <laughs> you know, just hashtag bomb it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, I've been thinking about Instagram, um, but yeah, I, I'll post. I'll put whatever I post a review. It's always up on Facebook. So the minute it goes up, so. Awesome. 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 Uh, I know that we are going to be running short today uh my apologies to the the listeners out there um sadly i've been feeling under the weather the past few days so we're not going to be going as long tonight as we normally would um we're going to continue on here obviously but um yeah just to let you guys know heads up halfway through the show we're like oh yeah by the way anyways (laughs) Uh, I know we were talking about it last week a little bit with Grim Green, and I know that I mentioned it before the show, but I'm going to mention it during the show as well, uh, Matt, when I had told you that I had finished watching the Justice League, Zack Sy- yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. Snyder's Justice League, and I was very impressed. I was very impressed. Um I had not seen all of those characters in one place at the same time before. It hasn't existed before. No. And now I see the the beginning of that. And it's like, hey, this this is cool. (laughs) I'm going to have to get into some more Justice League shit. So. Well, we are going to get it now. Uh, You know, uh... Hashtag Restore the Snyderverse has been the top trending hashtag in Twitter history. Really? Uh, it, yeah, it got like over 3 million tags within a certain period of time. Holy shit. And the one before that was uh, was 2 point some, some million from for uh, Avengers uh, Endgame. Holy so, cow. Uh, the vice president of uh, Warner Brothers had come out and said that, uh, you know, there's not going to be a continuation of the Snyderverse. But then, you know, 
that's when the hashtag restore the Snyderverse uh, started. And, you know, the internet just blew up. And, it, you know, but then HBO Max came out and said, look, you know, we're in a partnership here. And it's really our decision if we want to, if we want those movies and we want them on our, on our platform. Right. And uh, so it looks like, uh, you know, it's going to happen that the, you know, you hear things and, you know, but I remember when uh, the original Justice League came out and it bombed and everyone was, that's when the, the, you know, bring the Zack Snyder cut, the Snyder cut, the Snyder cut. And it took years till they finally were like, well, we're launching this HBO Max platform. What is a hook that we can use? And boom, there's the, the you know, Zack Snyder's Justice League. So it will happen. The HBO Max has already said they want the, the one thing they want uh, is the Ben Affleck uh, standalone Batman movie where he, he fights uh, Deathstroke. <gasps> yes. Yes. So they've already said that. So isn't isn't that going to be? I saw that. Uh, hold on, hold on for one second, guys. Sure, I did see that at the end. Did you watch Justice League, uh, CJ? I watched, I watched the with um, Joss Whedon, but, but uh, you know it's Zombie Jesus Sunday. You know everybody's kind of coming in and out. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I yeah. saw that at the tail end. Um, on the 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 boat in the prologue epilogue epilogue and uh i saw the boat and i i saw him on top of it i'm like oh, i know who that is and it's not deadpool <laughs> i was like i know who that oh, is the scene the scene at the end where uh where uh deathstroke shows up to talk to lex yes lex yes yeah oh my god i was like on cloud nine uh is, is did they make a movie with Deathstroke? No. Not yet. This is a brand new Deathstroke. Mm. Now Deathstroke has been in the Arrowverse. Okay. On the CW. You know, he was he was on this he was a big part of the second season of Arrow, and he's made many appearances uh since. Okay. But uh, you know, and uh but as far as Deathstroke versus Deathstroke in the movie verse in the uh Deathstroke in the, uh, you know, uh, versus Batman, that has never happened on, on film. Mm, that's going to be very exciting. Yes. Uh, I can't gonna, wait to see that. That, that would be Batman? great. What's that? Is that going to be a new Batman? Robert no, they want, the, the, they want it to be uh, ben part Affleck. of the, the Justice League uh, era, the Zack Snyder verse, and they want the standalone batman movie with ben affleck playing batman mm. which i don't know like my favorite is still michael keaton like i grew up well, on yeah, the original but... batman so michael keaton has been my favorite batman of all time that being said do i think that ben affleck plays a bad batman absolutely not i don't think he plays a bad batman Ben Affleck, uh, Batman was trained by Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith is the ultimate comic book nerd. And when Ben Affleck was chosen to be uh, Batman, everybody, of course, shit all over it. You know, and uh, Kevin Smith was the one guy who came out and goes, guys, he's got this. Yeah. And he has. He is. He was. The, okay, in Batman v Superman, particularly the Ultimate Edition, that warehouse fight scene, when he goes to save Martha Kent, mm. you know, that I mean, he was just a you know, he shows up just blo and people were just like, well, Batman's killing people, he's killing people. I go, yeah, he's been doing crime. You know, Batman eventually starts killing people. He, uh, um. He's been fighting crime for 20 years. Eventually, he's going to get a little jaded. You know, <laughs> just like, you know, he's no, going to be a little ornery. Yeah, exactly. He's just like, you know, this whole, uh, um, hey, uh, you know, you need to 
pay your debt to society and become a better person. Eventually, he's not going to care about any of that crap, you know, especially after Jason. He thought the Joker killed Jason Todd. Hmm. You know. I have to say, my still my favorite Batman is still um, Christian Bale. Yes, I, I'm not. Christian Bale was a great Batman, but those were not. Those were standalone movies. Yeah. They weren't part of the DCEU. Ooh, ooh. Uh, I I like to tell jokes too. By the way, CJ, and uh, since ones, we're on the topic of orphans, um... I already told you <laughs> that joke. <laughs> Now you're stealing my jokes to tell someone else. <laughs> Wait, which one? I was gonna say, uh, what? What do you call an orphan taking a selfie? <sighs> what? A family photo. Family photo. Okay. <laughs> now, I was talking about the one I told, uh, like either last week or the week. I think I told it one during the Bogan episode. Was uh, what do you call a a uh, virgin in Alabama? Hmm. Mm. An orphan. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you did say that one. Yep. Uh, yep. Then there's uh, uh, another good one. What do you call a nun in a wheelchair? A Roman Catholic? Virgin Mobile. Oh, virgin Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> but, you no, know, I do. I like, I do like. Not necessarily. You don't know with certain nuns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are orphans bad at poker? They don't know what a full house is. Yeah. <laughs> why are or why are orphans bad at poker? Not why are virgins bad at poker? Okay, all right. I'm starting to get the things confused. I'm like, why would virgins? Be bad? <laughs> are all orphans virgins now, Matt? <laughs> you know. Uh... <laughs> Whoops. And let's be honest, Chris, uh, that uh, you're, we're, we're, we're seeing all this shit on the same TikTok platform that we... <laughs> yep, yep, we are too. <laughs> totally seeing it on the same TikTok platforms. I made a website I mean, that... for orphans, but unfortunately it doesn't have a homepage. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> That's horrible. Why, why, do, why, uh, why, why do orphans uh, only play half a season of basketball? I don't know. No home, no no home team advantage. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No home team. Advantage. They can only visit. They can't play at home. Yeah. Um, just a quick disclaimer, everybody out there: we are not uh, prejudiced against orphans at all. This is all in good fun. Yeah, I mean, unless no the the dark humor page we 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 listen to or we watch on TikTok is mainly a group of black guys just telling the most racist, disgusting, you know, sexual humor they can they can at one another. And, there was one that and, he said, uh, my mom told me no electronics at the table, so I unplugged grandma's life support. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the worst one these guys said was, why is Kobe Bryant the, uh, the best black father? Don't know. Because he took his kid with him. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. I'm going to hell. <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> but I'm going to hell laughing. That's funny. I mean, that. But Batman was. Oh, yes. We were talking about comic books and somehow we geared towards <laughs> orphan jokes. Okay. <laughs> Well, I figured Batman was a good topic to tell an orphan joke, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, did you hear about the kid who found the genie in the lamp? No. He rubbed the lamp, the genie came out, and he says, you can have anything you want. And the, the kid goes, I want to be like Batman, so the genie killed his parents. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't have been Batman if his parents hadn't been killed. That's that's the, the fact of the whole situation. <laughs> oh, shit. I, see, I like the jokes that they, they fall in the category of morbid. Like, my girlfriend dumped me, so I t stole her wheelchair. Guess who came crawling, crawling back. back to me today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like uh you know uh after my wife died i couldn't uh 
I couldn't shower alone for 12 years. Oh, then I got out of jail. One one man's trash <laughs> is another man's treasure is a wonderful saying until that's how your parents tell you you're adopted. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, you know. Oh, man. Um. So, what's coming up on the channel this week, then, CJ? If uh, anything, other than the show. <laughs> yeah. um, I have the UL FMG. I know I'm late to that one, but... Um, uh, and I've got another juice from, uh, from the UK. It's uh, Rachel Rabbit. What, what the hell is it called? Booger. <laughs> Okay. Um, that's I haven't reviewed. I was playing around with it the other day. Oh. I was playing around with it this morning, but uh, that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Easter! <laughs> Happy Zombie Jesus Day! Hey, honey, I hid some eggs. Want to find them? Something I got to watch later too is one of my favorite Easter bits of all time by the late great Sam Kennison. Yes. Where, where he talks about, uh, uh, you know, this is how he knew, he goes, the, the Jesus was never married because no wife would buy the resurrection story in a million years. First of all, he leaves on a Friday afternoon with 12 fucking guys. <laughs> and she sees him again on Monday looking like he hasn't slept. <laughs> and where have you been for three days? Savior, oh, where are your God. 12 friends who won't get a job? Where are they at? Disciples, can... my ass. They're losers. <laughs> I can hear him saying that, too, in the typical Every Sam one of Kinnison them that says, scream. I believe, we put them up and feed them. Every single one of them, they're using you, and you just don't know it. Sam Kinnison was so funny. Oh. Oh, so funny. I, uh, you know, I, I, I halfway met Sam Kinnison when I was a kid once um halfway at well i was just like you know i saw him and i i bumped into it oh you and bumped said hi I, yeah i didn't like meet him and you know shake his hand and say hello my name's matt or whatever uh we were at the uh rainbow bar and grill in uh, uh in hollywood okay i was there with a friend and his family you know i was probably you know 12 12 years old you know you know, and I went to the bathroom, and as I was walking back, I ran into him. I wasn't paying attention. I bumped right into him, and I looked out at him. And I, I, for a second, I half expected him to just go, to just start yelling at me. You know, do the yes, yell at my yes. Face. But he just said, he goes, he just said, uh, he just said, excuse me, and he kept walking. You know, and I was just like, Sam Kinison, and then he just he turned around, and he waved, and he just kept walking. You know. Um, <laughs> I'm like it's at all whoa. it's at all possible Lemmy was playing on the 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 playing uh, on the slot you know the little slot machine they had there yeah um at the at his part of the bar but I did not notice um we just we the fam the my, my friend's family took us there to uh, have dinner that's crazy you know that is cool and it was a uh, it probably wasn't an environment children should be in. <laughs> no but that's what we went hey good food though uh i guess i don't remember <laughs> i was gonna say i don't fucking remember i was 12 years old I <laughs> oh, yeah man. man them chicken wings made an impression <laughs> Dude, those chicken wings oh shit but that i will always remember that i just kind of bumped into him and i looked up you know and just for a split second he, he, he i just kept thinking he was gonna go oh get out of my way oh you know, <laughs> but uh he, which would have been the greatest thing ever but it did no he just kind of, like i said he just <laughs> he, he would have shit you know, and, but it would have been great he said excuse me and uh uh he just kept walking and that's when i looked over and I'm like sam kittison and he just like went like that and just kept walking Oh shit! But, uh, so what's your? Um, we're talking about Justice League. What's your favorite oh. here, like superhero movie? Josh. 
Um, does that have to be DC or does that have to be no? Anything. 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 It um, better be good, or we won't be your friend anymore. It's, <laughs> um, it's between. It's between two. I've either the original. Avengers. Okay. The original Avengers. Which still has one of the most badass scenes when they, they do the they show them all united after uh, Bruce turns into Hulk and stops that, you know, and then they just kind of go in a circle around them, yeah. you know, and they're all, that is, an, that is an incredible scene. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I have to, I, I was going to go for another Avengers movie while I switch it up, but I, I'm going to say Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Okay. I was almost that's there. probably yeah uh sorry cj uh, that that is probably my favorite marvel movie although yeah, civil sure. war holds a, a a close tie if not you know yeah. a second if not a close tie but winter soldier is an amazing movie it's almost like a spy it's almost like a spy thriller it's, it's yeah like that you get to watch cap and natasha uh you know black widow uh you know kiss and flirt with each other and you could totally tell there's like there's just this whole thing on TikTok where it's like uh, screenshots of their text messages between each other, but it gets goes out onto a broader uh, network. So you got Bucky and uh, and all these other Avengers chiming in about how Cap and Natasha are really hooking up, and you know. <laughs> oh man, yeah. see mine. I really enjoyed Justice League. I really did. But it's still going to only come in third place. Um, my two favorite superhero movies are Deadpool 1 and 2. Aren't the, they can't argue with that. I can't argue with that. What's that, Matt? I said I can't argue with that. You, you, see, for me, Deadpool is in like a whole different, you know, there's yeah. like, you got all these different movies. Which one's your favorite? But Deadpool's right here just going, and, yoo-hoo! <laughs> yeah, exactly. And yes, technically you're right. He <coughs> is not exactly a superhero. He's an anti-hero. Um, He's an anti-hero. Yeah. Oh, and that's that's part of what A sets him apart and B makes the movies so freaking good. Because <laughs> I'm sorry, there are not that He's many like, I'm going to do good, but not because I like to do good things. <laughs> I, mean, do I almost... I almost fell out of my chair in Deadpool 2 when he looked at Josh Brolin, who was playing Cable, and he looks at him and he goes, Zip it, Thanos! <laughs> <laughs> well, he just, it's so good because he's not, he is chaotic neutral at its finest, with a little hint of chaotic good, just enough to make him likable. But, like, the chaotic energy that he has, that neutral energy of, I'm just going to do it because I want to do it. Yeah. So many people relate to it. It makes him so relatable. Because we're not all 100% angels as humans. Like, we all have that little chaotic. No. And it's delightful. No. I think that everybody <laughs> in this world should have a Deadpool in their life. Yeah. I think that would make life a whole lot more interesting. I'm just so glad that um, they gave Ryan Reynolds another chance at Deadpool because, uh, I mean, X Men oh, Origin. For a third? Yeah, and I'll tell you a story about that, CJ. Um, the uh, <laughs> when I saw that, when I saw that in the X Men Originals uh, Wolverine movie, I was like, and then I saw what they did at the end, and I was just like, they sewed his mouth closed. What? Yeah in the blue fuck to just happen there, all right? Uh-huh. I couldn't believe it. So when the movie, the Deadpool movie came out in the theaters, I was scared to go see it. I didn't know what they were going to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and then I watched it. I finally got told, like, by a ton of people, like, no, dude, you got to watch this movie. It's great. And I was like, all right. And it was on pay-per-view, and I ordered it on pay-per-view, and then I instantly regretted not going to the theater to see it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he just takes the piss out of other superhero movies he's been in. Uh, in the first one, where he goes, "Don't make a super suit green." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was a whole, uh, you know, t- yeah, because of the Green Lantern thing. Green Lantern. But yeah, Josh, let me tell you, in uh, there was for Zack Snyder's Justice League. Originally, Zack Snyder wanted to bring Ryan Reynolds back as Green Lantern and do that scene at the end. It wasn't supposed to be Martian Manhunter. It was supposed to be 
uh, John Stewart Green Lantern and then uh, Hal Jordan Green Lantern. And it was supposed to be Ryan Reynolds. But the studio said no. <laughs> Wonder why. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it had something to do with uh, um, Deadpool shooting Ryan Reynolds in the back of the head when he was reading script for Green Lantern. <laughs> and, <laughs> you're welcome, Canada. Yeah. You're welcome, Canada. <laughs> Oh fuck! When he showed up, when he showed up in the when they they did the the the, the splice in of him uh, showing up using Cable's time travel device, and he goes back to that and he shoots the the uh, you know his that that uh, uh, Deadpool that version it, of him. It, yeah that version of him. He's like, I'm just cleaning up the timeline. But I was just thinking, did he use any Antium bullets? I mean, that dude was pretty pretty powerful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so to get technical about the whole thing, I'm just like. Now, was, I mean, yeah. Cable was, and has forever been a, a big favorite character of mine as well. So oh, yeah. find to see him in Deadpool two was just unreal for me. Um, him, I had a very big um, connection with. <laughs> So, I was hoping you were going to say crotch. <laughs> no, not a crotch. I had a big crotch for him. A crush. Um, oh, crush. <laughs> crush. I thought you said crotch. I, I, it was just something about Cable. <laughs> something about Cable. I don't know what it was. Oh, oh God. No. I just heard that country no. song in my head. Um, uh, girl crush. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no. No girl crushes. Um. But Cable was a real um, character that I mm -hmm. I liked a lot. Um, I don't have many that I can remember from the comic books I used to read. Which ones were my favorites? I mean, I've got the essentials. Um, you know, Deadpool, Spawn, Venom. Um, I love Venom. Venom is crazy. I love Venom. Venom's oh, yeah. another anti-hero where he's not quite all good, but he's not quite all bad. He's just kind of there, but you just kind of follow yeah, along and you're like, <laughs> I am so in reality in the comic books, he was, you know, he was much more of a, a, a you know, a villain than he was ever. Yeah. A... yeah. Yep. Uh, then I'm he so was in the movie. Totally looking forward to that. Um, uh, uh, Venom. Maybe. What was yeah. that? Venom versus Carnage. Oh yes, yeah, yes. Venom versus Carnage. That's a movie I'd love to see. That's a movie I'd love to see. Oh, yeah. You ever squonk too much and then you just basically drink? Drink oh. the juice? Yeah. Oh. Yep. Done that. Over squonking. I is like a real Rocket thing. Blast, but not that much. <laughs> Over squonking is a real thing. It does happen. You must watch out for that from time to time. And that's one of the flaws with the profile is that because of how thick that cotton is, it's you really got to squonk it, and it's real easy to do. Yep. That is real easy to do on the profile. Absolutely. Josh, what's been one of your favorite uh, atomizers lately? It's still it's still this. The still that. Trilogy? Yeah, it's still the trilogy. I love this thing. <laughs> Uh, the Arbiter, the Arbiter's good uh, by Oxfa. Um, that's a really good, that's a really good RTA. Um, but yeah, has to has to be the trilogy. I use it every day still. Yeah, and that's uh, I, that's how I am with my uh, my Titan RDTA from Steamcrave. Um, I love that tank. It just thinks that just before the podcast, it poured juice everywhere. So I'm not using that one right this second. I have to clean it up after this this uh, podcast. So. But um, but we are running down on time. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do our podcast playlist. And uh, have you been thinking about songs that you'd like to add today, there, Mister Josh? I have written. I've written them down. <laughs> You've written them down. Okay, now it's my turn. <laughs> I've written them down um, because I didn't want to forget them. Uh, did, did you want me to say them or? Yes. What's the first one? Okay, so um, I've I've gone for three songs which 
I absolutely love at the minute. Um, well, one I absolutely love at the moment, and two are songs I've loved in the past but still love. Okay. Um, so my first one is Nat by Eminem. That's recent. That's very recent. Was it Axe? Nat. Nat? N-A-T. Nat. Like a little insect. G-N-A-T. Nat. Nat. Okay, Nat by Eminem. Yep. Okay. Uh, the second one is uh, The Bucket by Kings of Leon. Um, the reason I have that down is because um, it's one of the first songs I ever heard. Um, I was, I think it came out in 2004, I could be wrong. Um, I was about 10 years old. So that was, it was one of the first songs I... Kings of Leon were out when you were 10 years old. Yeah. I hate you right now. How old are you? You look like a baby. <laughs> yeah, they were they they were they were pretty they were pretty well new to new to the UK. I think they've been going in the states for a lot longer. But how old are you? Twenty six. Holy Jesus! He's still a baby. I know. I was thirteen when you were born. <laughs> oh my God, I, I think Poonsauce is a year older. Um. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and what's your third one there, Josh? Um, it's Oasis, Don't Look Back in Anger. For the same don't reason. Don't Look Back in Anger? Don't Look Back in Anger, yeah. Um, okay. For the same reason as um, King Salil. In Anger by Oasis. Okay. How about you, Matt? Okay. Well, you know how I break it up into categories. I do one song from more of a more of today's music you know stuff that at least came out this century right um then i do some classic you know a classic rock hit um or even just classic rock it wasn't necessarily even a hit it could have been a b-side on uh you know back when there was uh singles that had uh two songs on them you had the a side the main single that was being released and on the b-side uh which is how vanilla ice became popular oh. Um, oh, but, <laughs> ice, ice, true, baby. True story. Uh, the he his he, the song he was trying to make a hit was play that funk that play that funky music, uh, uh, vanilla, which was a like kind of a really bad cover. Yeah. With some additional lyrics and stuff of uh, play that funky music, white boy. But the DJ at the radio station flipped it and it had ice, ice, baby on the B side. And that blew up. That's you know that. Oh shit! That's one thing that sucks about the music industry today, is there's no is, the industry has largely become a singles industry where people are just downloading songs as opposed to entire records. Right. Um, but it, back in the day, when you had a, a single, you could at least have a second song on there, a B side, you know, that uh, you know might interest people into going to buy the entire uh the entire album that doesn't exist anymore but for me uh something more modern today you know i'm a big shine down fan um and uh one you know uh, i think i'd already put cut the cord on the playlist yep um now i'd like to put sound uh sound of madness so shine down sound of madness yep Shine down. And then right. uh, a classic rock song uh, from, I think this came out in 89. And uh, this was a B-side, B was uh, Motley Crue's uh, uh, Don't Go Away and Mad, Just Go Away. Don't go away, man. And then we do the one-hit wonder. And uh, for the one-hit wonder, I'm kind of having a Rocky marathon today. I already watched Rockies 1 and 2. Uh, when this is over, I'm going to watch Rocky 3. And from Rocky 3, we're going to pick Survivor, Eye of the Tiger. Survivor, Eye of the Tiger. It's the Eye of the Tiger. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> Survivor. All right. 
And Pixie. Savage Garden, two beds and a coffee machine. Boy. What is up with all these songs <coughs> with really long names? This is hard to write down very quickly. <laughs> uh, Savage Garden, what was the name? Two beds and a coffee machine. Two beds and a coffee machine. Jesus Christ. <laughs> no. I'm trying to run right as fast as I can. Two beds and a coffee machine. Not REO Jesus Speedwagon, Christ. One Lonely Night. And just because I love you, Third Eye Blind Jumper. <sighs> Look, I even kept that one short for you. All right. Jumper. I wish you would step up from that ledge, my friend. Please don't quit your day job. I, do, I don't. I don't. You're not. <laughs> Quick. Keep we're stepping over, out. <laughs> one more oh, step. Yeah, just jump off, jump off the ledge. Go Goodbye. You're an asshole anyway. Right? Um, <laughs> no. Uh, I'm and... kidding. I don't actually mean that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> boys and girls, children of all ages. <laughs> Keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Um, so my songs, we know my style. I love metal. So I am going to pick a metal song right off the rip. We're going to go with Lamb of God laid to rest. And, uh, Basically, that's the very first Lamb of God song I ever listened to. Uh, and I heard it, surprising, not surprisingly, on uh, a Guitar Hero game. So, um, but that was Laid to Rest. Uh, it wasn't... You know what? I'm going to go old school and totally outside of what I would normally suggest, but still a really damn good song. Um, Gloria Gaynor, Ain't No Mountain. Ain't No Mountain. Yeah. No. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Gloria Gaynor. Ain't No Mountain. And... Uh, we're going to go with an older metal song as well. Uh, we're going to go with some Slayer this time. Off of the Rain and Blood <coughs> album, we're going to go with Criminally Insane. Great album. Very good album. One of my favorites, actually, uh, from that, that era. Yeah. Definitely one of my my favorite albums ever. Criminally insane. All right, so that's gonna wrap up our playlist, and that is actually gonna wrap up the podcast as well. I want to give a big thank you to Vaping with CJ Josh. Thank you for taking your time out of your day. Uh, I know you've had a busy one today. You've been at work all day, so I appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with us for a bit. No problem. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Um, what? Uh, where can people find you? Where can? Uh, yeah. Where can people find you? Uh, Faithful with CJ on YouTube. Uh, Faithful with CJ group on uh, Facebook. Um, I might start doing some things on Instagram as well. So check me out if there. Um, Faithful on Instagram as well. Um, so head on over there as well. Um, and you can catch me on the Late Back Late Show at Monday at 7 p.m. UK time. Absolutely. How about you, Matt? What you got coming up this week? Where can people find you uh, as you? Um, well, uh, you know, I'm uh, putting in a 3,000% effort in getting my health back. Um, I'm documenting everything on TikTok Instagram, and Instagram, uh, which you can uh, find at Matt Sinister. 
uh, both both uh, platforms. Uh, you can check out my YouTube channel, which eventually I'm hoping to create like a whole documentary of my journey of getting my health back and uh, and putting it all on YouTube. But uh, you know, Matt Snister's uh, YouTube channel. Um, and of course, you can also find me on Discord, which uh, is uh, pretty much a daily thing. Absolutely. You know, uh, the Vape Stew, the Cool Kids Club, you know, with Grim Green. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really uh, Discord has been such a, a positive in my life of being able to be part of a community. Uh, a vaping community where I, you know, people all over the world. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I look forward if I ever get a chance to go to Australia to meeting, uh, breeze tones, you know, yep. and, uh, you know, or going to Canada and, uh, meeting, uh, Sammy, Sammy nitro and, Uncle uh, Chris. Old, yeah, Uncle Chris, you know, uh, but even in our own in our own uh, country here, there's parts of the East Coast that I have never been to, and uh, there's there's people out there that, uh, you know, yourself included, uh, Chris. That uh, you know, I always I would look forward to the day that we can all get together Absolutely. when all this COVID stuff is gone, when you know we're financially all of us financially are in better situations, mm -hmm. uh, that we can all you know do a stooge hangout or a cool kids hangout or you know, a combination of both. Yeah. But uh, the, the, the key, the key to all of it is discord. Yep. It is. Um, absolutely. You're right. I've, and this is even goes back pre COVID. Um, you know, I've been doing, hanging out with people in discord and zoom rooms, uh, for the past three and a half, four years now. Um, and it, it is, it's a blessing to be able to, connect with so many people with so many um like-minded people is what i mm -hmm. meant to say um <clears throat> and just being able to hang out and you know enjoy other people's company even though we can't you know do that in public right now um, yeah. but you're right it is uh it's a great thing it really mm -hmm. is how about you pixie not really <clears throat> kind of just playing around with resin stuff and doing the work thing and all that good stuff. Business as usual. Yeah, pretty much. I got you. And uh, same thing goes for me pretty much. Business as usual. Still waiting on starting this job. Uh, hopefully it, it happens very soon. Um, I'm still unsure as to when that's going to be. Pool season has not yet quite opened up yet. So um, I'm not quite needed at the moment but uh yep still waiting to start that we got some coils to build this week because if you guys don't know it is april which means it is autism awareness and appreciation month or acceptance month uh and i know that they're going to be a variety of different shows and streams going on this month uh in regards to autism awareness uh one actually was last night um an advocate for liberty on his channel did a uh, live stream for autism awareness um, and that was really cool but um yeah so that's what's going on with me this week uh, coils for this month's uh, autism awareness there's gonna be a giveaway at some point I'll let you guys know more about that when I know more about that but um, there will be a giveaway of some coils and uh, amongst many other things and yeah that's what i've got going on so that's gonna wrap us up today guys again cj thank you so much for popping in bro we love having you and um yeah so from all of us to all of you guys out there in you youtube and spotify land uh you guys can catch us again next week with another episode of the cloudy days calm nights podcast but until then i hope you enjoyed this podcast and uh yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.